Hi, chemistry students. We're going to talk about heterogeneous equilibria right now, which is essentially a way to answer the question, why don't we see solids and liquids in our equilibrium expressions? So we'll normally see a problem of this sort where, we'll, where, we'll, where you will be given a equilibrium and asked to write an equilibrium expression, possibly even solve for the equilibrium constant or the equilibrium concentrations of all the species involved. But we know that there's a variety of phases that are out there, solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous, that we have to deal with. So how do we take care of some of these different types of substance, uh, phases like solids and liquids when we're talking about pressures and uh, concentrations? Let's take a look. So if we were to write a generic equilibrium expression, let's say K sub C, we would write concentrations for every substance, every single substance, no matter what the phase is. And so I might symbolize that as Kc all. And the whole idea there is that I'm putting every substance in no matter what is happening at this point. Later on, we'll skip this step. And remember, when you write one of these, you use the stoichiometric coefficients, and that's where this 2 comes from. And also, we multiply. We don't add the terms together. So how about a solid? How do we handle its concentration? Because uh, that's what's in the example that we've got here. Well, we have, to we have to remember that for a solid, there's no such thing as a solvent or a, or, or, or a container that uh, volume that matters. Instead, these things have their own volume. Therefore, we need to stop thinking about these things as being dissolved in something else. They're actually dissolved in themselves. So we could write a, a kind of a uh, concentration for a solid or a liquid by saying, all right, the concentration of a solid or liquid would be the moles of that solid divided by the volume that that solid takes up. Remember, they take up their own space. They don't require something to hold them in some kind of space, like a solvent or a container. And the same thing goes for liquids, where we would just make this the concentration of a liquid be equal to the moles of a liquid divided by the volume of the liquid. However, if we think back, we know something about solids and liquids, and that is they, they have a characteristic density at any particular temperature. And this density is the same no matter what size the sample is. So these little ingots of gold over here, these little teeny, these little teeny guys right here, they have the same density as the big pieces right here. So the size doesn't matter. They all have the exact same density. Well, how does this help us? Well, we can convert using density the molarity of a, uh, the, the, the density of a substance to molarity by using the periodic table. Let me show you how. If we want to find the moles per liter of a pure substance, what we have is the density, which is in grams per liter, and it's so easy. We can get from the periodic table the grams per mole, and we can find then the uh, density. From the density, we can find the moles per liter of anything. As you see, the grams will cancel out. All right, so for example, water at 20 degrees C has a density of 998.2 grams per liter. So if I take that into account, I find that the concentration of water is 55.39 moles of water per liter of water. Do you get that last bit? It's the moles of water per liter of water. So it has a constant. If I had three ounces of water, guess what? It would have a concentration of 55.39. If I have a swimming pool full of pure water at 20 degrees C, 55.39 molar. That's what the concentration would be. Fantastic. So that means the concentrations of solids and liquids are constant. All right, so if that's the case, we can go back to our equilibrium expression and highlight our two solids. There's our reactant solid B, here's our product solid B2A, and if we think about it, they're both, if these are both constants, and this is called the equilibrium constant, shouldn't we have all the constants on the same side? So let's put them all on one side, and rearrange, and voila, we now have a constant times some other constant divided by a constant, which in the end is a brand new constant, and we call that thing just the simple K sub C. And as you see, if we had just written this from the very beginning, ignoring the solids and the liquids, we would have gotten exactly what we were asking, K sub C, everything in terms of concentration, that's either a gas or an aqueous substance. Fantastic. So, when do we, which K do we use? When do we use them? Well, we use K sub C when everything's a solution. That's easy. When they're all gases, we can also use K sub C. And a combination of 
any situation of any particular set of phases, you can always use k sub c. We also might come across k sub p, but that one's only useful when we have all gases or gases and condensed phases. If you have something that's aqueous, you can't use k sub p. And finally, if you have some kind of mixture where you have um, pressures and gases and solutions and stuff, you can always use just a simple k. And a simple k puts gases as pressures, solutions as concentrations, and ignores the liquids and solids. All right, let's try a few just for fun. So what you should do is you should stop this right now, write down what you think the answer are to these three uh, equilibria. Write down the equilibrium expression for each of these. Okay, hopefully you're back after waiting or after trying these out. And the first one? So the solids are not zero. That's one of the biggest mistakes. They're not zero, they're just ignored. And so kind of think of them as one if you have to, if you need a shortcut. So one over the pressure, the partial pressure of the chlorine gas. On the next one, we have the oxygen divided by the concentration of the chlorine squared. We put, we, this is K sub C, so that's why we're using concentrations. And then finally, for this last made up one, it's just, we're asking for just the simple K. So we put anything that's aqueous is going to be concentration. Anything that's gaseous is going to be pressure. And so we write that, not forgetting to use the stoichiometric coefficients to make these things out properly. There you have it. How to handle uh, heterogeneous equilibria when you're doing equilibrium problems.